Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning. It seems like I just saw a bunch of you. <laughs> Welcome to worship this morning. It is a beautiful Lord's Day. Let us begin our worship now with the order for confession and forgiveness. Please stand as you are able. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Trusting in the steadfast and sure love of God, let us return to the Lord, confessing our sin. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves, and in the world you created. We repent of the sins that enslave us, the sin we have done, the sin done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through Savior Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. God is generous to all who ask for help. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through the grace of Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Keep us in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let us share God's peace. Our service continues on page 147 in the front of our red hymnals. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of God, Lord God, Thank you. 
Let us pray. God of the covenant, in the mystery of the cross, you promise everlasting life to the world. Gather all peoples into your arms and shelter us with your mercy, that we may rejoice in the life we share in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Well, I have to compliment you all. We chanted the psalm last week, probably for the first time here, if not for the first time ever, the first time in a long time. And you all did great. In fact, you sang better on the psalm than you do sometimes on the hymns. We need to work on that. (laughs) But of course, the question is, why in the world would you chant the psalm? Way back in 1978, we got this new hymnal. It was green. And in that hymnal, it said, y'all ought to be chanting the psalms. Well, how come? Maybe it's because that makes us fancy. Do you think it makes us fancy? You've heard me sing, not fancy. (laughs) Well, maybe, maybe it makes us more like the Catholics. Truth is, they weren't doing it much longer before that either. You know, the Psalms, for many thousand years, they were sung. They were liturgy. And in the Jewish churches, the synagogues, and at the temple, when they would use the psalms, they sang them. And so part of why we do it is because that's how they were written. They were written to be sung. But there is probably more to it than that. We use a different part of our brain when we sing something. And so when we chant the psalms, we ought to experience them in a different way. A different part of our brain is working. So for the next few weeks through Lent, we're going to chant the psalms. Some of you came from places where you did that, and it does. It seems like, oh, we're back at home. For others of you, this is a brand new experience. It's okay. Give it a try. Maybe some went down the road. We'll try it again. But we will. We will experience the psalm today and for the next few weeks in a different way. We will hear the words and we will sing them. Amen.
The first reading for today comes from the 15th chapter of Genesis. God promises a childless and doubting Abram that he will have a child, that his descendants will be as numerous as the stars, and that the land of Canaan will be their inheritance. Abram's trust in God is sealed with a covenant-making ceremony, a sign of God's promise. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield. Your reward shall be very great. But Abram said, O Lord God, what will you give me? For I continue childless, and the heir of my house is Eliezer of Damascus. And Abram said, You have given me no offspring, and so a slave born in my house is to be my heir. But the word of the Lord came to him, This man shall not be your heir. No one but your very own issue shall be your heir. He brought him outside and said, Look toward heaven and count the stars, if you are able to count them. Then he said to him, So shall your descendants be. And he believed the Lord, and the Lord reckoned it to him as righteousness. Then he said to him, I am the Lord who brought you from Ur of the Chaldeans to give you this land to possess. But he said, O Lord God, how am I to know that I shall possess it? He said to him, Bring me a heifer three years old, a female goat three years old, a ram three years old, a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. He brought him all these and cut them in two, laying each half over against the other, but he did not cut the birds in two. And when the birds of prey came down on the carcasses, Abram drove them away. As the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram, and a deep and terrifying darkness descended upon him. When the sun had gone down and it was dark, a smoking fire pot and a flaming torch passed between these pieces. On that day, the Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying, To your descendants I give this land, from the river of Egypt to the great river, the river Euphrates. The word of the Lord. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom then shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When evildoers close in against me to devour my flesh, they, my foes and my enemies, will stumble and fall. Though an army encamp against me, my heart will not fear. Though war rise up against me, my trust will not be shaken. One thing I ask of the Lord, one thing I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord, and to seek God in the temple. For in the day of trouble, God will give me shelter. Hide me in the hidden places of the sanctuary and raise me high upon a rock. Even now my head is lifted up above my enemies who surround me. Therefore, I will offer sacrifice in the sanctuary, sacrifices of rejoicing. I will sing and make music to the Lord. Hear my voice, O Lord, when I call. Have mercy on me and answer me. My heart sees your message, see my prayer. your face from me. Turn not away from your servant in anger. 
cast me not away, you have been my helper. Forsake me not, O God of my salvation. Because of my oppressors, subject me not to the will of my foes, for they rise up against me, false witnesses breathing violence. This I believe, that I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord and be and wait for the love of the Lord. The second reading comes from the third chapter of Philippians. Although Paul's devotion to Christ has caused him to be persecuted, he does not regret the course he has taken. Writing from prison, he expresses confidence in a glorious future and encourages other Christians to follow in his footsteps. Brothers and sisters, join in imitating me and observe those who live according to the example you have in us. For many live as enemies of the cross of Christ. I have often told you of them, and now I tell you even with tears. Their end is destruction, their God is the belly, and their glory is in their shame. Their minds are set on earthly things. But our citizenship is in heaven, and it is from there that we are expecting a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. He will transform the body of our humiliation, that it may be conformed to the body of his glory, by the power that also enables him to make all things subject to himself. Therefore, my brothers and sisters whom I love and long for, my joy and my crown, Stand firm in the Lord in this way, my beloved. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 13th chapter. At that very hour, some Pharisees came and said to Jesus, Get away from here, for Herod wants to kill you. He said to them, Go and tell that fox for me. Listen, I am casting out demons and performing cures today and tomorrow, and on the third day I finish my work. Yet today, tomorrow, and the next day I must be on my way, because it is impossible for a prophet to be killed outside of Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often I have desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you were not willing. See, your house is left to you. And I tell you, you will not see me until the time comes when you say, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. I'm not exactly sure how it happened, but... A few years ago, I became a bird watcher. Now, I'm not like some of you who've been watching birds your whole life. For most of my life, I didn't really notice they were out there unless one of them 
left a prize on my car. But over the last few years, I've come to notice the birds. And amongst the things that I've come to notice are we have all of these amazing nest cams. All over the internet, there are cameras that are live streaming bird nests. And I have a number of favorites. There's one particular one in, in Michigan of a peregrine falcon nest. And every year that mom and dad have five baby peregrine falcons. And oh, they're so proud of themselves and the little falcons are so fierce even though they're tiny to start. Another one of my favorites is in um, Florida. And right now there are two eaglets that are just getting ready, maybe even today, to take their first flights. I watched a video from that nest. It was late at night. And the two baby eagles were in the nest, and mom and dad were roosted on a branch above it. And all of a sudden, from the right side of the screen, you saw this blur. It was a owl. And that owl came and knocked the daddy eagle clear out of the, off the limb and out of the nest. Now, I expected the next thing I would see was mama eagle taking off after that owl and there to be fisticuffs in the air. But mama eagle jumped down and she covered up those two baby eagles. Well, daddy recovered his composure and went after the owl. She, one of the fiercest birds in the air, rather than resorting to using her wings and her claws, she gave herself to defend to defend those eaglets. When warned that Herod was out to get him, Jesus likened himself to a mother hen. A mother hen who, when danger comes, gathers her chicks under her wings and gives her lives to protect them. It is the whole story of the passion come brought together in one image, isn't it? That is what happened on Good Friday and Easter. Jesus covered us up, gathered us in, and gave his life to save us from the world, from the harm that was coming at us from the world outside, from leaders and tyrants, neighbors and even family and friends, and from the harm that comes from ourselves. Jesus gave his life to protect us, pulled us under his wings as the hawks and the owls and the foxes were clo closing in to claim us but of course, we were having nothing of it. We were wiggling and squirming and trying to get out from under those wings. That is the story of Holy Week, all packed together in one image, the image of Christ. Christ is that mother hen, or even, even as a mother eagle covering humanity with his life. It's hard to read that image without thinking of the world that we are living in, especially these last couple of weeks. Mothers and fathers, like mother hens, giving their lives to save their children, their parents, their neighbors. Violence and destruction on such a horrific scale, and all streamed into our homes in 
4K HD. But of course, it's been going on all along. Wars and violence, killing and destruction, sometimes in places that we see on our TVs and often in places where there either are no cameras or no one thinks we care what's happening. Oh, how God must want to cover us up with his wings to protect us in his loving care. And oh, oh, how humanity just refuses to stay there. I'm sure we all get weary, especially these last couple of years of seeing the amount of suffering in our world, the amount of suffering that we have seen around us, sometimes close by and sometimes far away, the suffering that we have been called to care about and to respond to. Sometimes it seems like there is just a never-ending stream of misery and destruction and senselessness. Like those chicks under the hen's wings, I think we are tempted to wiggle free, to run away, to either face the threats on our own or to turn our heads away from the threats and the pain and the suffering of those around us. In a world that seems to be growing crazy, where there is evil all around us, God, God is pulling us in under his protective wings. On that Good Friday, our Lord and our Savior, he did indeed. He pulled us under his wings and gathered us in. And we are safe there. There is war and violence. There is an economy that's going on a wild ride around us. A little virus can come and turn our world upside down, can take the lives of our friends and our family. Injustice and crime and poverty continue to destroy lives. And yet, in the midst of all of that, we are safe in God's care, safe under Christ's wings to care for ourselves and to care for one another. We are safe under Christ's wings, for in his death and resurrection, he gathered us in. He gathered us in to love one another. He gathered us in to be a part of making a difference in the world around us. He gathered us in. Oh, yes, we're tempted to wiggle free and try to save ourselves and expect others to do the same. But he gathered us in to save us, to save us even from ourselves. Our Lord has covered us and has saved us. He has gathered us in. He gathered in. Amen.
Let, let us continue our worship proclaiming our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Drawn close to the heart of God, we offer these prayers for the church, the world, and all who are in need. You gather the church into a community of mercy and grace. Unify Christians around the globe in efforts to proclaim good news, even in the face of opposition, and to protect those whose lives are imperiled by the gospel. Merciful God, you create the entire universe and call it good. Hinder those who would cause further destruction to our planet's fragile ecosystems and augment the calls of those who advocate for thoughtful stewardship of the Earth's resources. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You raise up leaders committed to love and justice. Nurture in those who govern patience to receive criticism, openness to new ideas, and courage to change course when needed for the sake of the common good. Merciful God, you hear us when we cry to you. Our world seems to be coming apart. War is devastating our brothers and sisters in Ukraine and many other places around the world. Bring a quick end to the current violence and death and destruction. Comfort veterans enduring post-traumatic stress. Shield those who are endangered by domestic violence. Uphold those who are sick and those who are hurting, those who are grieving. We remember especially today Bob Ballard, Marilyn Peterson, Ken Girardi, Terry Miller, Jerry Hansen, Kelly Gephardt, Tom Howley, Eileen Ethington, Barbara and Bob Gislason, Evelyn and Jim Clements and their daughter Pam Babcock, Ezra Elcock, and all of those who mourn Bob Foster today, and all of those we name in our hearts. Merciful God, you kindle faith that moves us into action. Guide children and adults preparing for baptism or confirmation. Empower Sunday school teachers, confirmation leaders, and parents who share their faith with younger generations. Give us all a renewed sense of vocation. Merciful God, Accept the prayers we bring, O oh God, on behalf of a world in need, for the sake of Jesus Christ. Amen.
Extravagant God, you have blessed us with the fullness of creation. Now we gather at your feast where you offer us the food that satisfies. Take and use what we offer here. Come among us and feed us with the body and blood of Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. You call your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast that renewed in the gift of baptism we may come to the fullness of your grace. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Hear us now, O God, as we pray as Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You all may be seated. And once again, for those of you who are communing with us at home, and those of you communing with the kits here today, this is the body of Christ given for you. And this is the blood of Christ shed for you. And we are once again communing um, what we're call I've been calling the normal way. We'll begin with the left side and come down the aisle and receive the bread and the wine and return around this side. And then we're going to come to this side and we're going to try something new with the choir. We're going to make you go clear around the back. Let us begin.
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us through this gift in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another for the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. You all may be seated. I am reminded right away today to take a moment to say thank you to everyone who worked so hard yesterday. Um, we did indeed celebrate Charles' life and entrust him to God's care, and that takes a lot of work by a lot of people. And I will speak for the family and thank you all once again. It, it matters. We are in the midst of Lent. That means we are having Wednesday night worship, which means we need people to sign up to help. There are still some open slots. So if you would like to be one of our readers, we would love to have you. Check it, the sheet out on the sign-up board on your way in to get your donuts. Is there anything going on this week that... <laughs> this week is Community for Christ Week, uh, Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. If you would like to work, please sign up on the board. But most importantly, well, that's important. But this is also the start of our bag week. So it's $3 a bag. We'll have this for three weeks until our merchandise is gone. And then we'll have a free day uh, coming up here real soon. So if anybody has any questions, let me know. And if anybody needs any clothes for children or anything, let me know. We have it. Awesome. <laughs> Oh, yes. You know, if it's Lent, that means Easter's coming. We need people to make sure you sign up for the Easter pageant as well. So, is there a sign up sheet on the. If there's not one, we'll get one quick. So, uh, so Easter pageant parts as well? Sea Gale. There will be an Easter breakfast this, this year, and the men are cooking it. It's going to be exceptional. Of course, exceptional has lots of connotations. That <laughs> soup this morning? Taco soup. Do we have any first-time visitors with us this morning? Do we have any returning members who've been away for so long they feel like first-time members or need some bread?
Hearing God's call and responding in love, we share Jesus' call. Thank you.